Sports. We are Baltimore. We are Ohio. The Indians are honoring Hall of Famer Larry Doby tonight with the unveiling of a statue at the right field gate here at Progressive Field. Doby became the first African American to play in the American League on July the 5th, 1947, and played 10 seasons for the tribe, including their last World Series winner in 1948. The seven time All Star and two time AL home run champ helped pave the way for future generations of major leaguers, and now the Indians pay tribute to his legacy next on Sports Time Ohio. Bob Feller and Jim Tomey now have company as the Indians have unveiled a brand new statue today paying tribute to Hall of Famer Larry Doby. And here tonight at Progressive Field, it's the Indians and the White Sox in game three of their four-game series. Hi again, everyone. Matt Underwood alongside Rick Manning. If you've been with us by now, you've heard the comments, the tributes paid to Larry Doby by Indians owner Paul, Paul Dolan, by former teammate Mudcat Grant, and by Larry Doby Jr. himself. Hard to add much more to that. I can only tell you that the first time I met Larry Doby, I was a 26-year-old young reporter, and he treated me with class and dignity like I'd known him my whole life. Well, and for my first time ever meeting Larry Doby, I ended up going to spring training for the very first time. He was in uniform as an outfield coach and had an opportunity to meet him, and what a gentleman he was there. And I had an opportunity to play against him after he became manager of the Chicago White Sox, and he participated in a Cleveland Indians fantasy camp, so he was truly, I thought, a very fair, very honest, very great man, and his numbers speak for himself. A Hall of Famer, seven-time All-Star, two-time home run champ, inducted into the Hall of Fame in 1998. And so now Larry Dorby will be forever immortalized alongside Jim Tomey and Bob Feller here at Progressive Field. Now to the business at hand. The Indians have to find a way to win a ball game here at home. And the Chicago White Sox have taken it to them in the first two games of the series. And the task gets no easier tonight because they've got the big left-hander Chris Sale opposing them. Well, Chris Sale can be tough on anybody. He is 3-4 and four in his career against the Indians, but he can get on a roll. Eight straight games at one time this year. He had 10 or more strikeouts. Awfully tough. A lot of arms, a lot of legs. 8-5 with a 286 ERA, and this guy's got swing and miss stuff, as we all know. He'll be matched up against Carlos Carrasco. He'll have his work cut out for him 10-7 and seven on the year, 3-5 and five against the White Sox in his career. He's going to have to come out here, pitch well. The one thing I will say is Carrasco's had good run support. Now, can they go out and get him a few runs early off of this guy that he's going to face tonight? Carrasco has to stop this streak, and the Indians offense has to give him a little bit of support. Brandon Moss out of the lineup last night. He's back in there today. Jason Kipnis gets the day off. Mike Avilas will lead off and play second base. When we come back, we'll continue to pay tribute to Larry Doby when Andre Knott joins us here at Progressive Field. Cleveland Indians baseball is brought to you by W.B. Mason, the official office supplier of the Cleveland Indians. By McDonald's, I'm loving it. By your local Toyota dealers. Visit buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. And by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk, proud sponsors of the Cleveland Indians. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO.
me. So many guys before us, you know, stood strong and had so much strength to get through each and every day. And it's an honor and a privilege, you know, to actually be here for the unveiling of the statue. God chooses people for certain reasons, and uh, thankful for him being who he is and uh, who he was. And uh, you know, hopefully he's looking down on us and, and proud of what we're doing. Back here at Progressive Field getting ready for tonight's ball game. And, Rick, I don't know about you, but I've had some time to reflect on Larry Doby, my interactions with him, the things I've read about him, the things I've heard other people say about him. I've come to the conclusion that while he was born in South Carolina, grew up for the most part in Jersey, he was a Clevelander at heart because he was understated. He was just a hardworking grinder, understated, wasn't a showboater. Didn't point to no, himself. You couldn't do that. He, no, no, you couldn't do that back then. And I think that's probably why the people of, of Cleveland embraced him so when he played here. Let's go down to Andre Knott with more on Doby. You know, you guys talk about Larry Doby being a Clevelander. And really, when you talk to Terry Francona, he said, I got one good story for you. He goes, my dad was traded for him twice. He goes, now, I wasn't old enough to know, so I had to go look it up and make sure my dad was telling me the truth. <laughs> it was the truth. He said he met him at a fantasy camp, and he was everything everyone talked about. So when this day came about, Terry Francona wanted to make sure his team truly understood the importance of Larry Doby and why it was important. So important, no batting practice outside today. The team got in their uniforms, all went out to center field to see the trophy or see the statue put up in center field here at Heritage Park. The other thing about the players understand the true meaning of Larry Doby, whether it's Michael Bourne or Michael Brantley, they said, hey, without him, there's none of us here with the Indians today. You know, I'm glad those players went out I mean, there because Jackie that's a piece away, but I think that he goes under the radar a lot more than Jackie does. You know, I think that a lot of people don't know him as much about him. And uh, I think that he was the last one to win the pennant here, right, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, a lot of the team, people don't know about this. So tributes out and hats off to him uh, for the things that he did and for the things he's uh, paved the way for all the African-American players that's playing today, game today. Number 14 is my favorite number. Uh, I tried to get it when I got here, but, you know, uh, rightfully so, it's retired for a Cleveland Indian, and uh, he deserves our most respect. And uh, it's an honor and a privilege, you know, to actually be here for the unveiling of the statue. The best, the best part of that story with Michael Brantley is he says, "Look, 14 was my favorite number. I became an Indian. They gave me 23, and my dad said you better learn about number 14." He says, "I learned about it, and he goes, I teach my kids about it, and I want everybody to know what 14 means of the Cleveland Indians." Well, that's a great thing where they all had an opportunity to go out there and watch the unveiling in uniform. It's a piece of history you'll never see again. And, you know, I think that's one thing lacking in sports now is these kids knowing the history of the game. And Larry Doby certainly is. I remember when we had Larry Doby Jr. on with us, he, he made it a point to talk to Michael Brantley, being the son of a former major leaguer, because he said he made it. Yeah. Larry Dober Jr. had a tough time. I mean, you know, Major League Baseball is a very difficult thing to achieve. And uh, he certainly appreciated what Brantley has achieved so far in his career. All right, let's take a look right now at the starting lineup for the Chicago White Sox tonight. Under Robin Ventura, their lineup brought to you by Toyota. Mike Avilas, excuse me, um, Adam Eaton leading it off for Chicago tonight. Then it's Tyler Saladino, followed by Melky Cabrera, Jose Abreu, Adam LaRoche, and Avisel Garcia. Alexei Ramirez, Tyler Flowers, and Carlos Sanchez. Carlos Carrasco is our Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher. Carrasco making start number 20 this year. And, uh, you know, his last two starts, he has had no decisions. And he went 22 consecutive decisions before he had uh, no decision. But he pitched well enough in his last start against Cincinnati. And, unfortunately, he left leading 3-1. to one And uh, the bullpen ended up giving it up. So he had a no decision in that start. He's 1-1 one one against the White Sox this year. He is 3-5 and five in his career. But both those starts, if you remember, his first start here, April 14th, he was hit in the face and came out of that game and didn't retire a hit or ended up getting the loss in that game. You know, it came off the bat of Milky Cabrera. He's ready to go now as Adam Eaton steps in for Chicago. Pitch up high, ball one. Adam Eaton has gone two for ten in the series with a home run. It's outside. Two balls, no strikes. White Sox have scored first in each of the first two games in this series. 
But the big story so far for Chicago has been the big inning. Twice they've plated four runs in an inning. Big inning and the long ball. Here at home this year, the Indians have given up four runs in an inning 17 times. Now the 2-2. Just a bit high and a full count. Chicago begins the night just a half game behind Cleveland in the Central Division standings. Tribe 45 and 50, Chicago 44 and 50. Fouled back out of play. Seventh pitch of the at bat. And the payoff is lined in the left center field, a base hit. That's a good at bat by Eaton to start the game off. Let's check out the Indians' defense behind Carrasco tonight, brought to you by Chrysler. In the outfield, Rayburn gets the start and left. Brantley is in center, Moss over and right. It'll be Urshela at third, uh, Lindor at short. Aphelis gets the start at second, Santana at first, Gomes doing the catching. Mike McClinsky calling the balls and strikes. The crew chief, Bill Miller, down at first. Marty Foster at second. Adam Hamari is at third. And a first pitch strike to Tyler Saladino, who's gone one for nine in the series. So far this year, Carrasco has made seven starts against the Central. He's 5-2, and two, has pitched well. Two of those seven against the White Sox. Eaton has stolen six bases, but he's been caught four times. Yeah, they do not have a good uh, stolen base percentage. They've stolen 32, caught 26 times. You like to see three to one ratio when you're going to be a, a base stealing team. I think a lot of times they may start runners. Not that they have uh, what you would consider base stealers. Ramirez is the best. Alexi, he stole two last night. He has 13. Down low, one ball, two strikes. Well, Eaton's not a, not what you would consider a, a, a huge base stealer. He stole 15 last year. Yeah, he's you know he's fast, but maybe he's not that quick. You know, and, and you, base stealing is also an art of pick, uh, reading pitchers, picking up moves. That's a different phase of the game. That, I mean, if you're lucky enough to have enough speed to do it, you've got to work on it and learn your craft. It's like anything else. It's like the offensive side of the ball or the defensive side. You've got to learn how to steal bases as well. One-two offering. Line. Kip. Oh, reveal is just beyond his reach. You could see I mean, him trying to time his leap as that ball was sort of floating back to him. <laughs> That's a perfect word. It floated over his head. He missed it, I think, by an inch, maybe two. There was not much daylight over his glove. He jumped. He gave it the best effort he could possibly give it. It just got away. So Saladino gets a base hit, and they start out the first with back-to-back -back singles. Started to say Kipnis because he's been out there Every day. Every single day, but he's got the day off, so Mike Avilas in there at second base tonight for the Tribe. Now Melky Cabrera with two on and nobody out. This is only the second game this year that Kipnis has not played in and of course he could still get into the game at some point although 
Normally when a manager gives an everyday player like that a day off, he wants him to sit. Well, he picked a good day for the lefty to sit, that's for sure. Cabrera pulls it in the hole, a base hit. Around third comes Eaton. He's going to score. And the White Sox will play from in front. Three batters into the game. They strike first, one to nothing. Well, Cabrera's had a lot of success against Carrasco in his career. He's a 462 hitter. He's now 7 for 14. Make him a 500 hitter because he finds a hole between first and second. Eaton comes around to score. Three consecutive hits. No outs, and Carrasco better tighten the ropes right now because you can't afford to spot Chris Sale many more. You can't have a crooked number on the board early. That is now the eighth straight game in which the opposition has scored first here at Progressive Field. Yeah, 15 runs allowed. Look at that. And his 20th start, his ERA coming in with seven in the first inning. Jose Abreu bounced, and it deflects off of Gomes all the way to the backstop. And the runners each move up. That thing, that had to shoot 20 feet in the air. I don't know if it hit the plate or it hit out in front. Let's take a look at it because it, it, he went down to block it. Oh, he got crossed up. Oh, my. That was a fastball. He was looking for a breaking ball. It went off his knee, off the protection of his knee and went straight up in the air. He was crossed up on that pitch. First inning, oh, boy, that's not good. That's, he's charged with a pass ball. Okay. that's Well, that's a mistake of. And now the White Sox really in business. Second and third, nobody out. Boy, you wouldn't think that the, in the first inning, and these two have been at it all year long for the most part, looking for the breaking ball, and he throws him a fastball. And a base hit up the middle. That's going to score two more. And Chicago leads it 3 to nothing. Jose Abreu with RBIs number 50 and 51 on the year. Well, there's the crooked number you didn't want to put up. And it happens quickly. Another base hit. Four straight singles to start this game. And it's already 3 to nothing after the first four hitters. So that pass ball, that certainly hurts. This game is not starting out the way they had planned. And now Adam LaRoche, the batter, DHing tonight. One for eight in the series. He's punched out four times. I said that Carrasco, one other start, his first one against him, he did not, he faced two hitters and had to leave the game because of the line drive off his, the side of his jaw. But, boy, this isn't faring much better. Missed inside. Well, game started with a couple of bloops, one by Eaton, one by Saladino. They both fell in, and then Cabrera bounced a single through the right side of the infield, and Abreu lines one up the gut. Mix in a pass ball and quickly, 3 0 Chicago. The White Sox came limping into Cleveland, 10 games under 500 on the road this year. But they really took it to the tribe in each of the first two games, winning 8 to 1 and 6 to nothing. A ball and two strikes to count on LaRoche. Strike three called. First out of the inning. Let's go back to April 14th, second hitter of the game. Caught Carrasco on the right side of the face, 
deflected a little bit off his glove. He went down. That was a scary moment for a lot of people, including himself. Came out. He didn't have to go on the disabled list, it turned out. He missed about, what, seven days? Uh, just a couple extra days after that start, and he was back in there. But, boy, that was a scary moment. Obviously, El Garcia fouls one off. In tight. To third base. Scoop by Urshela. Goes to second. There's one. Avila's trying to turn two. But Garcia gets down the line and beats it out. I thought Urshela was just going to go right to first base with it. He showed me a little daring right there with that throw to third, and he made a perfect feed to Avilas. I think he knew he had time with Abreu running. He comes in and gets it on that little short hop, but he, he makes a nice play. That's a, that was a nice turn. They made it close at first base. Garcia gets down the line pretty well. He beat out an infield single earlier in this series when Lindor laid back on a ground ball, but they turned it nicely, only able to get one. So with two down, Alexei Ramirez, the seventh man to bat in the inning. This is a guy that's had a good series so far, the first two games. Ramirez Both offensively and defensively. Five for eight with a home run, and defensively he's made just about every play yes, you can imagine. Yes, he has. It's like he's turning back the clock a few years. Carrasco trying to keep him honest. He's behind, though, 2-0. and oh. He played over 1,000 games at shortstop for the White Sox. So he's been a staple, and he's a guy that plays every day. We talked about it last night. You can count on him being out there every single day. Yeah, there's he's, there's the list. 1,039, trailing Aparicio, Guillen, Guillen, and Appling. Swing and a miss, and the count is 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, it only seems like Alexei Ramirez has been around since the White Sox won that world championship back in 05, but it was Juan Uribe who was the shortstop on the world championship team for Chicago. Ramirez came along two years later. Speaking of Uribe, he just left Atlanta to go to New York, didn't he? I just saw that, yeah. He, he's just traded to Atlanta, been there about a week. It's amazing for a guy who, move. when we used to see him early in his career, he would swing at anything that was from the... Letters above. Yeah, yeah, he'd swing at everything. And he's really become a, one of those sought-after sort of complementary pieces that teams love to have. Garcia is off on the 3-2 to Ramirez in a foul ball. Boy, a 30-pitch inning for Carlos Carrasco here in the first. Again, obviously, El Garcia, the runner at first, will take off. And the 3-2 to Ramirez. 
is laced to left field. That is down the line. Rayburn trying to cut it off. Trying to cut it off. He will. Garcia will stop at third. And Alexei Ramirez with his 17th double of the year. And the fifth hit in the inning for Chicago. Boy, this is this is a rough inning for Carrasco. He turned on it, tried to go inside, and he was waiting for it. He, he likes that ball in. Got the fastball, but Rayburn can cut it off with Garcia on the run, and he can't score. So it's second and third now. Callaway's got to come out and have a talk to Carrasco, settle him down and say, let's go, man. we got to get this last out here. I mean, they haven't even been to bat yet, and it's been one long inning. A pass ball, which was a cross-up that helped the base runners move up. Another base hit. Not a good start. Well, Tyler Flowers, the eighth man to bat in the inning, went 0 for 4 last night. Squibs at foul. And a count 0 and 1. Flowers is 0 for his last 17 at the plate. <laughs> Breaks his bat and singles up the middle. He snaps the 17 at bat hitless streak and drives in two to make it 5 nothing Chicago. That's when you know as a pitcher it might not be your night. Well, I'm not taking I, anything away from Flowers, but. It sounded like it cracked his bat, to be you, honest yeah, with you. Yeah, when you give up a broken bat ground ball and two more runs come in. I have a feeling. I think I knew it wasn't his night a few hitters before that. Everything just falling the way they want to. And it's a five-run inning, and he's still working to get out of it. Bullpen about to heat up for Cleveland. Ninth man to bat in the inning, Carlos Sanchez. Jeff Manship just starting to get loose. This is not something you expect in the bullpen to have to get ready in the first inning. Though I'm sure the guys in the bullpen, as you, started to sense it about four hitters into the game. Like, uh-oh. Yeah, this, is, this doesn't look good. First four all reached via singles for Chicago. Now with two outs, a double and a single. And now a comebacker ends the inning. But the White Sox land a big first-round punch. They lead it five to nothing.
Chris Sale warming up for Chicago and the Indians starting lineup he will face for Terry Francona is brought to you by Progressive Insurance. Mike Avilas leading it off. Francisco Lindor batting second. Michael Brantley third. Then it's Rayburn, Santana, Gomes, followed by Moss, Aguilar, and Urshela. And tonight's Northern Ohio Honda starting pitcher, Chris Sale, making his 19th start, his 10th on the road. And uh, I'm sure everybody's heard about this guy, but he has fanned 10 or more batters in seven consecutive road starts. He had a streak this year where he went eight straight starts where he struck out 10 or more batters. So this guy has been tough, a 286 earned run average, but he is human when you look at him in the American League Central. He's had nine starts. He's 2-4 and four with a 495 earned run average. The first pitch of the night from Sale is a strike to Avilas. Out of play to the right. Missed outside. One ball, two strikes. Up and away, it's two and two. And Avila is able to lay off. Full count. And Avilas chops it to short, backhanded by Ramirez. And a perfect throw gets him one away. Let's check out the White Sox defense tonight, brought to you by Chrysler. It's going to be Cabrera in left field, Eaton in center, Garcia over in right. Saladino at third, Ramirez at short, Sanchez at second, Abreu at first, Flowers doing the catching. Francisco Lindor looks at a strike. Sale, you know, all arms and legs. He comes at you from the side over. It looks like he's throwing out a second base. He has a good slider and also a changeup to go with it. And he will throw those at any time as well. Rolls one to second base, and Carlos Sanchez will throw out Lindor two down. Keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. Michael Brantley. Two for seven thus far in the series. You know, believe it or not, lefties are hitting for a higher average against Sale and righties, 254. Which sometimes is hard to believe. Left or right handers just 211. But of the 12 home runs Chris Sale has given up, all coming off the bat of right-handers. See where this one got Michael? Right off the, looks like the top of the right foot. Upstairs with a fastball. And that's fouled out of play. Chris Sale is on pace for 281 strikeouts, which would obliterate the franchise record held by Hall of Famer 
Ed Walsh, who struck out 269 back in 1908. Well, he's one of those guys, if you've never faced him before, you're certainly at a disadvantage. I would think the more looks that you get at him, you have an opportunity to see him a couple of times. You know how he likes to go about his business. That certainly helps. And the Indians have done well against him in his career. He's 3-4 and four with a, an ERA just under 4. And Brantley with a base hit in the right field. Long run for Garcia the way they had him shifted. And Brantley strolls easily into second base with a double. That swing right there tells you everything you need to know about Michael Brantley. Not an easy out by any means. I don't care who you are. But he hangs in there and fouled one off his foot. He got one down, and he got after it and drilled it down into right field. Gets his 29th double. You saw where Garcia was playing. He was a good 100 feet off the line. Not expecting Brantley to pull that pitch down yeah. and in. Well, that ties him with uh, Kipnis now as the league leaders in doubles. What a good hitter. And here's Ryan Rayburn. Takes a strike inside corner. Rayburn trying to snap an 0 for 9 streak at the dish. The appeal, he did not go. It's one on one. Ryan has batted an even 300 on the season with runners in scoring position. Same pitch, same result, same call. Two and one. Change up. 2-1. That's what I was uh, curious to see, what he throws when he gets behind a right-handed hitter. You're figuring, all right, here comes that good 96-mile-an-hour fastball. He throws him an 86-mile-an-hour changeup on the outside part of the plate. All the more effective because he's, he's been in on him so much. In, 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 and, he, you know, he can be more aggressive. He has first base open. Not that he wants to walk him by any means, but he's not afraid to miss. And he powered it by him at 97 miles an hour to end the inning. After one, it's Chicago 5, Cleveland nothing.
pretty humid. Top of the order for Chicago. They send nine men to the plate in the first. High ball one to Adam Eaton. If you missed it earlier, Cole Hamels of the Phillies threw a no-hitter today. Could be his final start with the Phillies. He's on the trade block. Our buddy Ken Rosenthal of Fox Sports reports that only two pitchers have been traded in the same season in which they threw a no-hitter. The last one was Edwin Jackson. Okay. 2010. Was he with their Arizona then, I think? The other, the other was Cliff Chambers in 1951. So fairly rare. That's if he's traded. That's if he's traded, correct. And, you know, it all comes down to what, what teams are willing to cough up to get him. The Astros have reportedly been one of the teams that have at least sniffed around. Well, if they want him, too, they'd be cornering the market on left-handers, wouldn't they? Well, yeah. Keuchel and now Casper and Oberhoser and... Well, the second inning not starting out any better than the first for Carlos Carrasco. He walks Eaton to start. And Manship will probably be up soon. Let's get on to Andre Nod, who has the latest on Jason Kipnis, who's out of the lineup He's today. He's out of the lineup today. He has a stiff neck, not a bad stiff neck, but basically Chris Sale's on the mound. Terry Francona wanted to give him the day off. He says if he was needed to pinch hit, he could pinch hit later. How about this, guys? What if the man that threw a no-hitter today against the Cubs was traded to the Cubs? Well, they'd probably welcome him. I mean, they, they, <laughs> they've got the best scouting report on him than anybody. <laughs> Rip down the left field line. That's foul. In addition to the Astros, who I mentioned a uh, have reportedly kicked the tires on Cole Hamels. The Yankees, the Dodgers, the Rangers, the Giants, and the Cubs are reportedly interested. And as we've come to find out with these kind of situations, there's always teams that are interested that you just don't hear about, and then all of a sudden, sure. oh, he got traded there. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> I'll tell you one thing. Uh, these White Sox hitters, they're not getting fooled they are getting some very good swings off Carrasco. And a count of ball and a strike. To third, Urshela goes to second. There's one. Avilas turns a double play. Just what Carlos Carrasco needed. Two down on the base is empty. Well, Urshela got a nice hop up. He just got, has to give uh, Avilas a good throw. Who takes his time, throws it sidearm. Plenty of time to get the double play. Man, it brings up Melky Cabrera. Outside corner called strike. Two down on the base is empty and an 0-2 count on Cabrera. Swung out and missed. He struck him out. Second K for Carrasco. And we'll go to the bottom of the second. Indians down 5-0.
Carlos Santana, Jan Gomes, Brandon Moss do up for Cleveland. Santana hitless in the series, 0 for 7. Just 2 for 28 against White Sox pitching this year. One on one well, account. And the bulk of them have been left handers, I would think, you know? It seems like it because I remember we had a four game series in Chicago. All lefties, right? Were they all lefties? Didn't we have that stat? It was like the first time. Yeah, might have been. Yeah. That first time through all lefties. Bouncer to short. Ramirez unloads. Got him. One away. Time now for a Mazda game break. We talked about the no hitter. Between the uh, Phillies and Cubs, here's how it ended. Fly ball, center field. Watch Odebill Herrera. Whoa. Yes. Oh, my goodness. Can you believe that? Oh, he slipped. See, I'm thinking to myself, you should have put a little more drama into that final out of Lenny Barker's perfect game. No, no, thank you. You should have jelly-legged it, you know, pretended like you got... No. Fell in a hole or something. You're telling the wrong person that. I'm surprised it didn't happen to me where I <laughs> fell. Or, you know, <laughs> twisted an ankle. That is unbelievable, that catch. He slipped and he ended up making the play. Could you imagine if that would have cost him the no-hitter? I don't, wouldn't you love to have a heart monitor on him? And in the moment he slipped down where oh. his heart rate shot up to? Boy, oh, boy, I'll tell this you. Is, this oh. is Dr. Smooth, the original yeah. Dr. Smooth. No, look at two hands. I wasn't going anywhere, buddy. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> you surround it, you catch it. There's no time for showboat there. Well, it was uh, these White Sox during Mark Burley's perfect game. I don't remember the center fielder. He made a spectacular catch. Uh, Dwayne Wise. He had just gone in center for defense. Field. Yes, he did. Left center field. Over there, he certainly did. There's a drive right field, but not going anywhere. Garcia over and makes the catch, two down. But, you know, everything that the Philly's been through this year and Hamels and the, the trade talk for him has been all winter long, and it's still going, and he's still in, in Philadelphia. How about Sandy Koufax? You have to go back the last time the Cubs were no hit. Wow. And the third no-hitter this year in the majors, and there's an awful lot of close ones. Carlos Carrasco had his own for eight and two-thirds innings. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of close calls. Brandon Moss, 0 for 3 in the series. Takes a strike as 1-1. One Oh, boy, did he pull the string on that off-speed pitch. Goes from 97 to 76 miles an hour. And it's moving away from you just like that. Another strikeout for sale. Indians go 1-2-3. And the White Sox lead it by five after two.
nothing. Going to the third inning, it'll be Jose Abreu, Adam LaRoche, and Avisil Garcia for the White Sox. Matt Underwood, Rick Manning, we're happy to be joined now in the booth by Larry Doby Jr., who is on hand with his family today for the unveiling of the statue that will immortalize his father for generations to come here at Progressive Field. You were here several years ago when they renamed Eagle Avenue Larry Doby Way. How did today compare? It's very similar emotions, just, I guess, a lot more of them. You know, I mean, it's a statue that'll stand for a long, long time, and they saw fit to erect it, and we are very proud and happy and, you know, just a very, uh, you know, warm feeling. Yeah, something very special. I think he deserved one here for, you know, many years because of what he went through is something very special. And, I mean, you you were talking about it today in your speech out there. Any great stories that your dad ever told you about baseball? And I'm sure he has, and I'm sure you have number. You know, Rick, he was very tight-lipped, but as he got older, you know, his lips got a little bit looser. And, he, you know, so he told me a few things. One thing I remember is he said that he loved when early win pitched. And I said, why, Dad? He said, because I didn't have to worry about anybody throwing at me because if they threw at me, he was going to throw it to theirs. <laughs> yeah, a little protection there. Yeah, so That's he right. Said when an early win was on the mound, he went up to that plate just looking for the baseball and not thinking about anything else. Abreu chops one a third. Giovanni Urshela throws him out one down. Some of the ceremony from earlier this afternoon. I, I can't imagine the feeling you must have had. I mean, you grew up with the man, so he's your father. Yes. For hundreds of thousands of Indians fans, he was a player that many of them idolized. But when they pull down the sheet, what is it? What goes through your mind when you see your dad in statue form? Well, again, it's an overwhelming feeling, but I also know that he didn't do it by himself and that this town has to be commended because, you know, when he told me that story, when he said they never booed me, and I looked at him like he was crazy, but I know he meant it, you know, he felt like he belonged to them and that whether he struck out three times or hit a home run, they were always, they always had his back. And I think that was something that he never forgot, and that's why whenever he came here, whenever he spoke about Cleveland, there were always great memories and warm memories. So, you know, it, it, it's just unfortunately a lot of people – won't get the credit, but he gets most of it, but he got a lot of help. You and never uh, had, had a chance to see him play, did no. you? As, as, uh, that's no, unfortunate, too. That's, no. I mean, I was when I first came up, my first big league spring training, I had the opportunity. He was coaching here yeah, and uh, as yeah. an outfield coach, and then I was just moving to the outfield, had a chance to meet him then, right. and then uh, he ended up going over to Chicago and, yeah. and then managed the White yeah. Sox in 1978. Yes. You yeah. know, and – you even played for the White Sox. Yeah, you were drafted in the, minors, yeah. in the late 70s and yep. early 80s, yeah. and you had an opportunity to play over there. So yep. um, it was uh, for everything I know, and we had him at a fantasy camp before. Uh, I loved him, and mm -hmm. uh, we were talking with Buddy Bell earlier. Oh, and I know you know Buddy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Buddy had a lot of great things yeah. to say. Yep. Yeah, it was good to see Buddy. I hadn't seen him in a long time. Larry, the last time you were with us, you, you made a point to say that you, you talked to Michael Brantley because you said mm – -hmm. He's the son of a big leaguer mm -hmm. who got to the big leagues. Yes. How daunting was it for you to be Larry Doby Jr.? Well, you know, when you're little, you know, people are saying things and, you know, come on, you know, you got to do it or you're not as good as your dad. But when you're young, you don't really realize what it is. When you get a little older, you do. And sometimes it makes you press a little bit. Sometimes it doesn't. But it's all part of it. It's it's it's. I, I wouldn't have had anybody else, wouldn't have wanted anybody else for a dad. Mm -hmm. I'm very proud of all his accomplishments. You know, the fact that I couldn't follow in his footsteps disappoints me, but it didn't disappoint him. So, you know, as a father, you're going to love your children no matter what they do. Hopefully they turn right. out to be good kids and good citizens. And, you know, that's what I try to do. You know, it disappointed me more not making it than it did him, I think. But the thing of it is the expectations were poured upon you because you were yeah. Larry Doby yeah. Jr. And that's, yeah. a, that's the toughest thing about yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's just the, the nature of the game. But you deal with it. That's, yeah, that's a hand exactly. you were dealt, and you go exactly. out and, and you exactly. play your hand. Exactly. Did he ever share with you the difficulties that he went through and some of the things that he had to deal with in, in being a, a guy who paved the way for many generations to come? You know, he didn't talk about it a lot, but what he did say was that he was pretty sure that if, if – Jackie Robinson and, and him didn't succeed, it would have been a long time before they, they, they let more people in. So I think, you know, he 
they win the World Series. He hits a home run. He makes the All-Star game. He does this, that, and, and you know, makes the whole thing. But I think what he was most proud of was that, you know, because of his efforts, it opened the doors for a lot of people to come after him. Boy, did it ever. Yeah. So I think that's what he was most happy about. And, you know, when they weren't staying in the same hotels and they weren't eating at the same restaurants, yeah, that might have bothered him, but they were still the best African-American hotels or the best African-American restaurants. So they were treated good. And that's really the only time that he felt that separation because when they're on the field, they all had a common goal. They played, you know, to win, and they all were trying to do the same thing. So, you know, he didn't really feel it on the field. Yeah, it's amazing if some young people would go back and look at the days of what it was like and, and do the research and the history of the game. He paved it in the American League, yeah. the very first one in the American yeah. League. Yeah. And although he was the second one in baseball, same as far as becoming an African-American manager because yeah. Frank Robinson was number one here, yeah. and he went over to Chicago next. Yeah. But he still paved the way for yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. You know, I just think he was uh, kind of accepted his role in history. He knew he was number two. He wasn't going to get as much, uh, you know, notoriety, but he was proud of what he did and, and his position and that he helped open the door for other and a people. very humble man too yeah. yeah yeah you said before that he was he was fine with his place in history yeah. he was at peace with it yeah. and uh and you made a mention today i thought it was very pointy you said buzz aldrin is from our hometown <laughs> yeah. which was funny when <laughs> mr dolan was telling that story i'm like well we know because <laughs> you know he grew up there but yeah that was kind of funny that two number twos in the same town. Yeah, everybody knows neil armstrong yeah everybody forgets buzz aldrin yeah. was right behind him on yeah. the ladder yeah. exactly exactly you still enjoy the game? Yeah, it's you know, for my money, it's the greatest game ever. You know, you can be six foot eight or five foot eight. True. You know, yeah. you can speak English or not speak any English. You know, so yeah, it's it's still the best game I think. It's our national pastime, and I'm proud that my dad had something to do with making it all American. Well, we're proud to have you with us here tonight. Thanks so much for stopping by. My pleasure. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Nice Larry Doby Jr. with Thanks us here tonight. Senior. Indians down early to the White Sox. For Miller Time, brought to you by Miller Lite. Jesus Aguilar leading off for the tribe, and he fouls one straight back. As the old saying goes, the apple didn't fall far from the tree. You, you talk to Larry Dobert Jr., and you can almost hear his father's, you know, sort of reserved yeah. t temperament sure. in his voice, you know. Yeah, just sort of, uh, yes. I was I was shocked, Rick. They were playing some uh, videos earlier of, of Larry Doby as a manager with the White Sox. I was shocked to see him lose his temper, you know, because well, 
Back and, in those days, you had to fight the umpires. Yeah, but, I mean, it was just, you know, when whenever I heard him speak or whenever I spoke to him in person, he was just so reserved and laid back. And, you know, I can see how Larry Jr. ended up playing professional baseball because he's a big kid, and I could see yes, him playing in the outfield. Yeah. He said, I guess the separator couldn't hit the curveball like a lot of people. Like a lot of people. You're right. This is Larry Toby. Get him, Larry. <laughs> Let's see Managing who Managing for the White Sox. Kenny Kaiser. Oh, well, that's, that's no Kenny surprise, Kaiser. is it? Yeah, right. Rochester's own. That's him. He got, I'll tell you one thing, too, boy. When he got he got mad, look at he, he wouldn't let him go. I don't know if you remember those uniforms that the White Sox wore back in the 70s and 78. Those Rick, were the shorts, Rick, man, I'll and the lapels. I'll tell you, this is the honest truth. There weren't a lot of games on TV, so we rarely saw right. baseball on TV. I remember getting baseball cards as a kid's and kid and thinking, oh, those have to be like maybe practice uniforms or spring training. You, I had no idea that they actually wore those in a game. They sure did. In a game, they wore them all year. Yeah. <laughs> That's like... I, I remember even as a kid thinking, well, wouldn't it hurt when they slide into second base? Yes, it would. Well, you know, they I mean, you could use knee pads or you could cover them up with, uh, you know, some socks or whatever. But it was, uh, they were ugly. Mm. You know, they That's were. being kind. <laughs> yeah. And not only, okay, it's one thing if you're going to break out shorts, but the giant lapels to go with them on the collars? <laughs> Well, Chris Sale's finding it. That's three straight strikeouts. And we go to the top of the order in Mike Avilas. There's a little more on Chris Sale with our Levin Furniture player profile. Quickly to the big leagues after they drafted him. What's interesting to me is it's always fun to look back at the draft. And so when he was taken with a 13th overall pick in 2010, you look at those who went before him, the first overall pick that year, no surprise, Bryce Harper. He's worked out very well. Second pick to Pittsburgh, Jamison Talon. He still hasn't made it to the big leagues, still in the minors. Manny Machado went third. That's worked nice out pick. really good for Baltimore. Christian Colon for Kansas City. We've seen him briefly. Drew Pomerantz was fifth overall to the Indians. He was traded, obviously, in the uh, Ubaldo Jimenez trade, but he has not panned out to the expectations that many thought. Barrett Lou for Arizona, not sure. Never heard of him. Matt Harvey of the Mets, elbow issues, but still regarded as a very, very good pitcher. Delano DeShields went to Houston. Karsten Whitson went to San Diego. Then Michael Choice went to Oakland, mm -hmm. outfield. Right-handed hitter. Deck McGuire, 11th to Toronto. Yasmani Grandal went 12th to Cincinnati, and then Chris Sale. Fly ball center field. Indians go one, two, three. Sale has set down seven in a row.
Uh, Larry Doby served the country in World War II, great ball player. We've already mentioned his connection to Buzz Aldrin, the second man on the moon. But he was just as good of a ball player, an exciting player, and a very good teammate. Yeah, it could not have been easy times back in the day. You know, when those guys were coming up and they broke that barrier, that we have no, no, no. idea. No, no idea whatsoever. Alexei Ramirez delayed it off for Chicago, doubled and scored his first time up. I think the only thing that is pretty pretty evident, and, and I think we can say with almost certainty, not having lived through it or even known anybody that, that was close to the situation other than our brief dealings with Larry himself, you had to be a special individual to be that first person, to be Jackie Robinson, to be Larry Doby. And they had to have known the ramifications of success and failure, what it would have meant to those who came behind them. Right. And I can't imagine, Rick, I know on a teeny tiny minor level what it's like to play the game of baseball. You played it at the the professional, the major league level. I can't imagine trying to play it with that hanging over your head. Well, that becomes secondary then. You know, you're going out to prove a point. You're the, you're the man on the mission, and, and you're out there to prove it and, and set the standards. You know, I learned a lot from Mudcat Grant, who I've spent many years with. You know, he was a broadcaster here when I first came out. We've been involved in fantasy camps and everything. And, you know, just sitting and talking and listening to the stories, and he was a roommate when he first came up with Larry mm-hmm. Doby. He had to go through those trials, tribulations, just like he did, only he didn't pave the way. But, boy, you know, he, he has such high standards for the people that did. I mean, those are the guys that can really tell you what it was all about because he had to go through it himself. You know, Mud's here. He's in town. I wish we had an opportunity to get him up here, but I don't know if we can. Carlos Carrasco settling in has struck out three straight, five in the ball game. And since he got the double play off the bat of Tyler Saladino, he's retired six Sox hitters in a row. But they did the damage in the first with a five spot. Now Tyler Flowers, who knocked in the last two runs of this game, breaks his bat, bounces one to third. He broke his bat the first time up, and two runs came home as the net result. Now there are two down here in the fourth. Injury report brought to you by the injury lawyers at Elk and Elk. Dustin Pedroia on the DL with a hamstring injury. He's already been on the DL earlier with that same problem. Came back for a half dozen games, which means Brock Holt is back in there as the everyday second baseman now for Chicago. Two down for Carlos Sanchez, a tapper back to the mound his first time up. He takes a strike, 94-mile-an-hour fastball from Carrasco. You know, the other thing, too, about Larry Doby that, you know, he, he'll always be remembered as the second African-American to play in Major League Baseball, but he was the first to lead his league in home runs, and he was the first African-American to hit home run in the World Series. There you go. So his, his name's first on a few categories as well. Don't let that be forgotten. And, you know, I thought it, I don't know about you, but I thought it was pretty, pretty poignant. While he tried to make it a humorous story, Larry Doby Jr. saying that he liked when early wind pitched. His dad said he liked yeah. when early wind pitched because he knew if somebody threw at him, early would throw it two of theirs. Moss back, he's out of room and it's out of here. Carlos Sanchez, the number nine hitter with his first home run, he knocks it out of here to the bullpen in center field. A two-out homer here in the fourth to make it a 6 to nothing Chicago lead. See if they give him the silent treatment when he comes in. His first Watch. big league homer, and nobody's talking to him. Yeah, <laughs> they're going to walk by. That's right. And, I mean, he hit a Joel. They got out of here. Just made it. But it, it doesn't surprise me, though. They've been hitting home runs in this series. They had... Uh, 
the big three run homer the other night and they had but they have four last night, so that's six in the series now. Now the bench empties, and they all go over to give yeah. them the high fives. That usually happens when you hit your first major league home run. They're sitting down, and they're going to ignore you. Adam Eaton pops one out of play. But that story about, you know, imagine... Knowing, that, okay, I got I, I can take it easy today. I don't have to worry about anybody well, throwing at me. Yeah, because they, they, he was a tough dude out on the mound, and, and that's what they thought back then. If you hit one of mine, I'm going to get two of yours. But imagine playing knowing most days people You're are going to be throwing, throwing at you. Yeah. Whew. And there was, as we had Gary on last night, Gary Bell, nobody charged the mound. It wasn't a hell of a lot you could do about it. Right. I mean, there wasn't. You, you had didn't to charge it. it. You take your base. Wear it, as they I mean, say that now. was uh, every hitter, too. That wasn't just African-American hitters. Everybody just got it. You took it, you wore it, and you moved on because the players took care of it themselves. The teams took care of it amongst other teams. 3-1 pitch to Adam Eaton. Upstairs, ball four. Carlos Carrasco has already made 80 pitches. And the two-out walk keeps the inning alive. He had two outs. In the inning when Sanchez hit the home run, and then the walk to Eaton, and out comes Mickey Calloway again as the Indians' bullpen goes back to work. Get live Indians baseball season along with MLB.com at bat on your smartphone or tablet. You can stay connected with live radio broadcasts, stats, breaking news, and more. Download MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Jeff Manship, who was up earlier getting loose, is back at it. Runner goes. Throw down. Not in time. Adam Eaton with his seventh stolen base of the year. He just uh, stole that one at will. It wasn't nothing Gomes could do. He couldn't even get out of his crouch to throw. Inside corner, a called strike, and it's 0 2. Out of play, right side. Low and away, one ball, two strikes. To third, it's a fair ball, and Urshela, long throw on the money. Retires Saladina to end the inning, but another home run. From the Big Bats of Chicago. This one by Carlos Sanchez, his first Major League homer.
Tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag STO Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T Mobile. Home half of the fourth. Tribe down a half dozen. Francisco Lindor to lead it off. Grounded out his only time up. Takes a fastball in for a strike. To short, Ramirez unloads in a hurry. One down. Our stat of the game brought to you by Buick. Chris Sale with 167 punch outs. Moves ahead of Corey Kluber. Said before he's on pace to set the Sox single season franchise record. Which was set by Big Ed Walsh back in 1908. And that was the same year that the Indians and White Sox staged a furious September pennant race right down to the wire along with the Detroit Tigers. And... In the last week of the season, Addy Joss threw a perfect game against Chicago, beat Ed Walsh one to nothing. About that perfect well, game to I mean, I mean to win it in, in in late in the season. Yeah, I think those that's like Don Larson. You know, you throw yeah. a perfect game in the World Series, you throw a perfect game with so much riding on it late in the year. And I know it was 1908, and there weren't hundreds of millions of people watching on television, and everything like that. But still, pretty pretty impressive. And to think, Rick, that, that 260, I think it's 269 strikeouts by Ed Walsh has stood that long, all yeah. these years. And, That's and right. Chicago's had some very good pitchers over the years. They certainly have. One, two offering. Oh, my. That's not fair. That's the equalizer there. It's not. When you can throw 96, 97, and then you throw this slow breaking ball that just. Drops in. Well, Brantley had a great at bat his first time up. He got a fastball down in the zone. But look at that ball starts out behind him. He didn't give. It's just that it locks you up. You don't pick it up. It's behind you. Next thing you know, it's breaking over the inside part of the plate, and you're going, my, I can't hit that. Especially if you're sitting on the fastball to catch up to it. You know, I, I told you, I gave you his record in the Central Division. It's 2-4. and four. Against the rest of the league, he's 4-1 and one with a .97 ERA. And he has three wins against the National League team. So, you know, when you don't face him a lot, you re- I don't think you have a chance. Much of one. You have to hit the long ball offer. And left-handers. Left-handers haven't hit a home run. There's only been actually two left-handed hitters. That hit, have hit home runs off sale. One of them is Travis Hafner. Did it August 16th, 2011. The other one was Brandon Bosch. He's he's done it twice. Both in 2012, September 2nd and July 21st. And that's it. If you're a left-handed hitter, you may get a hit. You may hit one off the end of the bat or hit something, but you're not going to leave the ballpark. Well, and Sale, like so many good pitchers, you, if he starts getting into a groove. Yeah, his rhythm, he's unhittable. 3-2 pitch. That's slugged. Deep center. Eaten back. He's got room, though, and makes the catch shy of the warning track. Well, Rayburn gives it a ride, but all for nothing. And after four, the Indians still scoreless.
Six nothing in favor of Chicago as we roll to the fifth inning. And the Cleveland Clinic call to the bullpen has been made for the tribe. Right hander Jeff Manship is coming on in relief of Carlos Carrasco, who made it through just four innings tonight, charged with six runs on seven hits. Well, uh, three starts ago, he went four innings as well. That was against Houston on July 6th, where he gave up 10 hits and five runs. So. One, two. He's had two decent starts, but two rough starts after that near no hitter in Tampa. Melky Cabrera, pair of 53s squaring off here. Takes a strike. Cabrera drove in a run with a single and scored in the first. He is five for 10 in the series. Two home runs, two doubles. Out of play. One ball and two strikes. Swung out and missed. Manship strikes him out one away. In-game recap brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. In the first inning, Chicago jumped Carrasco. Four straight hits to open the inning. And then with two outs, a big two-run broken bat single by Tyler Flowers made it a five spot. Carlos Sanchez, his first major league homer, came in the fourth inning. And it's been all Chicago tonight. And it has been in the series. They have outscored the Indians 20 to 1. Well, this is a team that had a hard time scoring coming in. They were last in the league in runs scored, last in home runs, last in doubles, second to last in walks. But you would never be able to tell by the way they've swung the bat in this series. Abreu strikes out, and Jeff Manship says Abreu might be in the driver's seat, but I'm putting him in a passenger seat this inning. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for the Indians right-hander. He's done a nice job coming out of the Tribe's bullpen. Yeah, when you look at it now, hitters are just 5 for 40 off Manship. Since he's had an opportunity to come in and pitch, and I know they've been limited, and you know you pick your spots for him, but boy, the times he's been in a ball game, he's looked very good. Out of play. Rosen with a pitch over the inside corner. High pop out of play. Out of play, left side. And the count saves one ball and two strikes.
trying to go to that backdoor breaking ball. The 2 2. And LaRoche pulls it into the dugout. Set him he scattering. ran right into it, whoever it was on the end. Carlos Sanchez trying he, to pick off the new home run hitter. He's like, man, this is a tough racket. I hit my first home run. Nobody talks to me. Then they're hitting balls at me. 2 2. Check. Yeah, Did he go? Yes. They appeal. He yes, went. Yes, yes, yes. So that'll end the inning. And Jeff Manship. Gives the Indians some much-needed relief. He strikes out the side here in the fifth inning of Cabrera, Abreu, LaRoche, all down on strikes. Bottom of the fifth. Santana, Gomes, and Moss do up for the Tribe. Chris Sale. Big curveball misses inside. Sale has retired ten in a row. Santana slugs one to deep left field. That baby is off the wall. He's digging for two. Cabrera's throw. Close, but he's in there safely with a leadoff double. Santana's 18th two-bagger of the year. Just the second hit of the game for Cleveland after Michael Brantley's two-out double way back in the first. Now well, line drive. Let's see what the pitch is. I think it might have been a hanging changeup. Stayed upstairs, and uh, Santana lined it off the, the wall. Cabrera played it nicely, but in goes Santana. Gets in before the tag. Awfully close. So the leadoff double here in the bottom half of the fifth. You can see he gets the hand in before the tag was applied. Jan Gomes fly to right. His only time up back in the second. Out of play. Out of play again, almost the same spot. Folks better be aware over there. The 0 2 fastball straightened him up. Another reason why Sale can get a lot of punch outs. Well, tonight he's had 10 0 2 1 2 counts. 
And when he uh, gets ahead of you, boy, he can put you away. He has different weapons, a lot like a Corey Clover, who we see on the strikeout list. Wow. 95 mile an hour fastball puts Inside. Gomes away. Let's check in with Andre Knott, who's hanging out in the district. Thanks, guys. Fabulous day here in Heritage Park where the RBI baseball group is here. The Larry Doby statue was going out today. If you missed today, come out tomorrow where it's Kids Fun Day. Kids run the bases, and you can check out this wonderful statue here in Heritage Park here at Progressive Field. All right, thanks, Andre. Here's a bloop towards center field, but it's going to hang for Adam Eaton. Two down. Andre always knows how to draw a crowd, doesn't he? He does. Everywhere he goes, that seems to be... Uh, it's like the Pied Piper, man. Him and Court. Court's a guy that, I mean, where he goes, there's usually a crowd that follows. Is that right? Yeah. I never noticed that one. Court Barry Tripp works with the Indians Media Relations Department. He wasn't here last night. It wasn't in the press box. But he was texting me during the game, and I assumed he was at home, you know, have, had the night off. And he said, no, I've only missed one game this year. I was here. I was just in the office <laughs> on the press box. Okay. Did you congratulate him? <laughs> I did. I did text him a clapping the ha of the hands. <laughs> Jesus Aguilar looks at a ball outside. It's one and one struck out it is only time up in the third their days are never done and a foul into the glove of flowers one ball two strikes change up change up those right handers that's why he's tougher against the right handers they're looking for that fastball in and that back foot slider then all of a sudden you get a pitch on the outside part of the plate it looks like the fastball and it's a change up and he has you so far out in front and he gets swings and misses that was a fastball he didn't quite get it in enough Right back up the middle, Aguilar. It skips by Sanchez, and the Indians get on the board. It's their first run of the night as Jesus Aguilar has his first RBI on the year. That one looked like it had a little spin to it because I thought maybe uh, Sanchez might be able to knock it down, but it looked like it just had some spin. It went right by him. So a two-out base hit. This will be our McDonald's. I'm loving it. It's a breaking ball. He goes right back up the middle. Let's see the spin if there is any on it. It was just that top spin. Looked like Sanchez felt he should have knocked it down or at least caught it. But that goes as a base hit. Indians on the board now, 6-1. to one. Giovanni Urshela struck out his first time up. Rounds one right at Sanchez. Easier player for the second baseman this time. And the inning is over. Tribe gets on the board. Aguilar with an RBI single. Tribe down five after five.
Data Strong fan photo of the game. Tweet your photos to hashtag STO Data Strong fan for a chance to be featured in an upcoming telecast brought to you by T-Mobile. Obviously, El Garcia. Loops one foul on the right side. Garcia reached on a fielder's choice and scored in the first, struck out in the third. Right at the third baseman, Urshela. And he throws him out one away. Well, come on out and celebrate Slider's 25th birthday with his mascot friends. That'll take place tomorrow as they wrap up this series against the White Sox. Kids, you can also run the bases. It's Kids Fun Day. Get your tickets at Indians.com. Swung out and missed. Punches it to left. And a nice running catch by Ryan Rayburn, two down. Well, Rick, we, we've talked a lot about the trading deadline fast approaching and the rumor mill that continues to stir things up. Robin Ventura had to deal with this one. How about Larry King, the talk show legend? He tweeted out, that fans shouldn't be surprised if the Dodgers and the White Sox complete a trade before the deadline. Ventura said, quote, I missed that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see, the Dodgers and uh, the White Sox. Yeah. Did he say for who? Uh, evidently not. But well, Ventura that... said, you know, you, you can't put, you can't go chasing every rumor that pops up out there. And he said, I, I don't worry about it until the general manager comes to me and says, hey, this is what we're going to do. Well, that's, the, yeah, that's the former player in him. White Sox go one, two, three. Jeff Manship, six up, six down.
second hit was a walk-off game winner against the Angels. Yeah, what a way to start it, huh? Get your first hit. Nice. Mike Avila is going to lead it off here. Bottom of the sixth. He's 0 for 2. And a fastball in for strike one. One one offering. Wouldn't you love to go back and uh, either interview or look at the scouts notebooks of say the top ten teams that had the the you know the first ten teams that drafted that year and just see what they said about Chris Sale coming out what what they thought because would, I mean if you and I went down and we don't know scouting from building a rocket ship. But if we went down and watched the, this guy pitch when he was in college, we probably both would have said the same thing. I don't know if he could make it in the big leagues. You look at him, he's tall, he's skinny, I mean, his arms are flailing in every Frail. which direction. You well, know, yeah, will he hold up? Is he durable enough? I know the White Sox didn't feel that way because they promised him, if you sign, we'll get you to the big leagues. You'll be the first one to the big leagues. And he was that year. And they used him out of the bullpen. And that was part of the, the, the process when they signed him. I just wonder how many teams were scared away from him because they just looked at him and said, I don't know, physically I've never seen anybody like this guy that's been successful. Well, they're looking at him now. I remember he started in the bullpen. Remember he had some arm issues. They, they started them, went back to the bullpen. Well, we thought that might have been part of the problem because he was going back and right. forth. But once they just said, all right, you're a starter and left him alone, he's pretty much put any fears to rest. That's off the end of the bat. Diving catch in center. No, Eaton can't hold on. And Francisco Lindor with a one-out single. Boy, it looked like he had it, didn't it? He made a nice attempt. wonder if it popped out or if he ever actually had it. Might have been the, uh, the ground causing the fumble right there. Let's see if he gets the glove to it. It looked like he caught up to it on time. There he goes diving. There it is. Oh, never got the uh, glove. It hit him like above it in the wrist. Nice attempt. He got there. But when he dives, it just went off like the heel of the glove. So it'll go as a base hit. Pop back out of play. Well, all I know, Rick, is that at 6'6", 180 pounds, Chris Sale and Alexei Ramirez have to have the lowest body fat in baseball. <laughs> Ramirez, he's, he'd be considered chubby next to Sale because he's 6'2", and 180. They weigh the same amount. And Sale's four inches taller. Well, God... That is that that that's hard to believe. I wonder if that that's his signing weight, and they still weigh that. Sale walks by Ramirez in the clubhouse and says, "What's up, fatty?" <laughs> that's that's just hard to believe. Look at that. Yeah. Talk about long and lean. Good thing they have tailors now in the clubhouse. That's true. The 0-2 pitch. Brantley lines one up the middle. Another spectacular play by Ramirez, who somehow caught that before it hit the dirt. And he takes potentially a hit away from Brantley. It wasn't hit that hard, but it's kind of an in-betweener. I, I, I almost think he wanted to short hop it, to be honest with you, and then flip it to uh, Quintana, but he gets his glove underneath it. 
And Michael was running all the way. You can see uh, Sanchez coming up and, and ducking like if he missed it, he could go to first base. But he catches it in the air. That's a tough one for Lindor because if he short hops it, you're, you're dead There's anyway. There's nothing you can do. Yeah. No, that's the case where if you're the hitter, you got to run that out, and, and Michael certainly did. Ryan Rayburn flied to deep center his, only, his uh, last time up in the fourth inning. And a base hit in the right field. Lindor stops at second. And the Tribe has two on with two out. Let's go down to Andre who wants to chime in on Chris Sale. You guys have talked about the drafting of Chris Sale and everything he's been through with his career with Chicago and the trade deadline less than a week away. And Chris Sale's name has not been thrown out there, but heck, if you're a team, you would call and ask about him, right? Well, the other day he says there's something to be said for being with the team your whole career and going through the ups and downs. I've been up, I've been down, and I think for me, I would love to win. I don't want to go anywhere else. He told that to the team. He told that to Robin Ventura. And he says, look, I'm a White Sox. I'd prefer to be a White Sox the rest of my career. Tells you a little bit about who he is and what it meant for him to be drafted by this team. Well, it is something special when you're a high draft pick like he was and you make it onto the scene, and he's the number one guy in that rotation. You know, you want to turn it around. Caught the outside corner. I mean, uh, he battled. Uh, he, he was suspended for five games this year. You remember the incidents against Kansas City early in the year, the bean balls and the going over to the other clubhouse and things like that. So, I mean, he is a White Sox at heart. There's no doubt about it. Swung out and miss. It's two and two. He showed me something earlier in the year. Remember, it was back on May 18th. We were in Chicago. He came out. I, I want to say maybe he was struggling a little bit early. Gave up a run. Might have been against Kluber. It was one of those games where he went eight innings. He left, and it was a 1-1 game, and they ended up winning in extra innings. But you could tell he was amped up because he was going against Kluber. That's right. You know, he's going up against a Cy Young Award winner, and he... You could see that he, he took it. his game to another yeah, level that yes, night. Yes, he did. You're right. You're right. He sure did. That was his ball game. 2-2. Two -two. Santana looks. It's in the dirt. Ball pops loose, and the runners both advance. So, oh, for this, a could base be, hit now. this could be huge if the Indians can cash in now. Get a couple of runs home, slash that deficit in half. Well, you're going to see that slider goes down and in the dirt. Flowers, it just kicks away. It's heads up base running. Lindor picked it up. He took off. Rayburn followed. Now you need a base hit. You cut the lead in half. If he walks, Jan Gomes would be next. The payoff and a ground ball right at Ramirez. And the shortstop will throw him out. Tribe strands two, and after six, it's 6 1 Chicago.
Kia. Visit MyKiaCleveland.com to learn more. By Levin Mattress, located in all Levin Furniture and freestanding locations. And by AT&T U-verse, has more channels on the go than cable. Beautiful sunset out over Lake Erie tonight. Gorgeous evening here at the ball yard. But ugly on the scoreboard. Chicago with five in the first before the Indians even came to bat. Now we go to the seventh inning. And Jeff Manship, who has turned in two perfect innings of relief, stays on to work the seventh. Carlos Sanchez, his first major league home run his last time up. Yeah, I got back to the dugout and received the silent treatment for, for a little bit. Chase one on the dirt. One and two. Austin Adams getting loose now for Cleveland. To third base, Giovanni Urshela has had a busy night. Our AT&T U-verse rewind. Jeff Manship came on, struck out the side in the fifth inning. And looked very good doing it. Yes, he did. He's faced seven. Seven up, seven down. And speaking of seven, Giovanni Urshela has recorded seven assists tonight. And he's also uh, been involved in a double play that he started back in the second inning. So he's been busy and he's been equal to the task each and every time. Well, uh, you like that, man. It keeps you in the ball game when you have opportunities. You can uh, go a game, not a whole lot at third base, but you can go a game where you won't have a player, a tough player at a position. But when you're you're part of it and keeps you into it mentally and it makes it fun two one chopped up the middle off balance play and a scoop by Santana he's called out this might get reviewed it was very close Robin Ventura coming to the top step of the dugout Avilas had to make an off balance body or uh, off balance across his body throw well, it was a nice pick on the end of it, and I know it's going to be close. They call him out. Will they have enough to overturn it? We will see. There's the throw. Here comes the ball. Here comes the... Safe. Yeah, I think he is safe. I think so, looking at that. It didn't look like the ball was in the glove when his foot hit the bag. So, I... Well, we'll see. White Sox have uh, asked for a review. The acting crew chief tonight is Bill Miller. And he was the umpire who made the call at first base. Marty Foster, second base umpire, there with him. It was awfully close any way you look at it. It's going to be bang, bang. And it was quick on the review. Safe is the call. An infield single for Eaton. So he has two hits. He's walked twice. He's been on safely all four times tonight. Then after seven in a row, Manship gives up his first hit, but it was a bang-bang play, and if not for the probably the fastest guy in the Sox roster, anybody else is an out. Yeah, good play. Villas did everything in his power, and he does. He just beats it out. So Manship's going to go. Nice job. We've got a timeout here in the seventh with one on and one out.
Well, it'll be another Sugardale Dollar Dog Night on Tuesday. The Indians will take on the Kansas City Royals. They're coming in for a three-game series, and fans can enjoy Dollar Dogs all night long. Get your tickets at Indians.com. Austin Adams coming on to pitch for Cleveland. The right-hander is working in his 15th game. In 18 innings, he has struck out 14, but he's walked nine. And I think right there is sort of the... It's going to be a difference maker for Austin Adams. If he can command it. Yeah, get his work on that side of them. I mean, the guy can throw it with the best of them up to 100 miles an hour. It's, it's, I think it's a matter, and we hear this a lot, we, you've heard us talk about it a lot, trusting your stuff. This guy's got great stuff. Great fastball. He's got a nice slider. But you have to pitch from in front and trust it. They don't know you. The league doesn't know you. Believe that you belong here and uh, get it done. That ball got into the crowd, I mean, in a hurry. That ricocheted about four or five times. It was like skipping a stone on water. It just took off. Right back oh. to Adams. He couldn't find the handle Goodness on it. Goodness gracious, he had it, too. And he throws it low. It's in the dirt. Saladin, uh, Saladino beats it out. Oh, boy. He had it, too, in the backhand. It was in the glove, and he sort of, like, flipped it out of his glove. He had it. I think it might have surprised him. You see, he's got a little smirk on his face now as he turns, and he just knocked it a little too far away. Look it. Here comes the glove, and then flipped it out. He thought it might have been in there. He yeah, it. he's thinking about a double play. Well, he thought it was in there. Then he tried to jump on it, makes it throw it first. And then Saladino beat it out. Nine hits now for the Sox. Melky Cabrera, one for three on the night. The Sox have had 10 hits in each game so far this series, game one. You know, the weird thing about tonight, though, Rick, all those hits, only two extra base hits. Yeah. The solo homer right. by and Sanchez, and then the, uh, the double by Ramirez that didn't play to run but came with two outs in the first, and everything else been just singles. Yeah, a lot of singles in a row. Yeah, four to be exact to start <laughs> I mean, the game. That wasn't good. You hit singles, hit a lot of them together, and you got a chance to score. Yeah, the way it started for Carlos Carrasco tonight, the four straight singles, the pass ball obviously played Set a role in that right. too. Yes, it did. They scored three right out of the shoot, and then with two outs, they got the big broken bat two-run hit from Tyler Flowers that made it a five-run inning. And that, more than anything else, has been the story of the series. It's uh, the third time that they have scored four runs in an inning. Yeah, at, at least, least four. Right. And that in the story is the fact the Indians haven't scored. They've scored one run. Now two now. What are we at, 24 innings? Well, let's see. 24 18 innings. and 6, yeah, and 24. Two runs. Tough to win, regardless of what the other guy does. Well, when you go like it's been on this homestand, it, it, you almost have to play perfect baseball to win, and it's hard to do. You can't do it. No margin for error at any phase of the game. And that's not a fun way to play. It's not a fun way to manage. 
You know, you, the old saying, you make your breaks in this game. The Indians have got to dig. They've they got to find a way. I don't care how. You can face good pitching. It doesn't matter. you got to find a way to get on the board and keep them off. And look at that. The off the glove the right. of Santana. It goes into right field. Another run home as Eaton scores. 7-1 White Sox. Melky Cabrera with his second hit of the night, his second RBI. Again, they're all singles, but they're, there's three in a row. That run's going to be charged to Manship. And it deflects off the glove of Santana into right field. So they go first and third now with one out. And you've got the, the big man up. And that is the 60th inherited runner to score on the Tribe's bullpen out of 184. So what does that equate out to? About 30%. 30%, I'd say, yeah, 60 out of 180, yeah. yeah. Jose Abreu drove in two in the first with a single. Takes high, one and one. The White Sox have not been a good offense this year, but in this series, they are doing everything right tonight. They've gone 7 for 12 with a runner on base and 4 out of 5 with a runner in scoring position. That's Robin how Ventura you just sitting back going, why can't we do this every Well, night? Uh, of course. Yeah, I mean, you sit back there last in the league. I'm sure he's had his share of nights where he's going, my goodness, are we ever going to score again? But that's what happens when your offense clicks. You hit with runners in scoring position and on base. He scores six runs a game, five, six, seven, eight. They had eight in one game. So that's how it works. It's just that you got to find a way to be a little more consistent with it. But they've been very good in this series. Looking to win the third game. There's only one to go. Last time the White Sox won three in a row in Cleveland was back in 2012. And it wasn't even in the same series. It was spread out over two different series. Well, if you remember two years ago, the Indians just trounced the Sox. They were 17-2 and two against them on the year. And don't think that doesn't wear on you. You know, when they're sitting in the offseason, they know it was like that one year when the Indians mm -hmm. were 4-14 four and 14 against the Tigers. They just owned them that year. That's a pretty good pitch right there. Two down. Elevating the fastball where we cannot get him in. This will be our Circle K strikeout tonight. He elevates the fastball. He's looking for it, and he's got enough on it. You can see Abreu, he can get to that fastball, not to this one. He throws it by him upstairs. And with two down, Adam LaRoche, the batter, he is 0 for 3 on the night. He has struck out all three times. He is 1 for 11 in the series with seven strikeouts. He might be the only one that's not hitting, and there you go. Well, uh, how do you like that? He shoots it in the left field, driving home Saladino, 8-1 Chicago. Cabrera stopping at second. Well, he gets the fastball, and you rarely see him go that way. That's why the shift is on, but he hits this one to left field. It's a two-out base hit. It drives in another run, and the Sox are at eight for the second time in this series. Obviously, El Garcia 0 for 3 on the night. Bouncer to second. And Aviles throws him out. 
Sox tack on two. Seventh inning stretch brought to you by Spitzer Auto World. 8-1 Chicago. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. And for Cleveland, Jan Gomes to lead it off. Gomes 0 for 2 tonight. He has flat out struck out. Broke his bat down the left field line. Fair ball. Long run for Cabrera, so Gomes can take his time. He'll easily roll into second base with a leadoff double. Yes, second leadoff double of the night for the Indians. It breaks his bat. He gets in there, but he hits it down to the left field corner. So Gomes gets his first hit. He was 0 for 2. Gets his 10th double. There's Brandon Moss 0 for 2. Told you earlier, Sale was on a string where he had 10 punch outs in the uh, Seven consecutive road starts. He, you know, I don't know how what the, how they're going to use him. He has six on the night right now. Well, that, you know, the, the old saying I think it was in, in basketball, football too. Defense travels. Yeah. Good pitching. It doesn't matter if you're home or away. Well, that's true. He can he can strike him out. And he can get the outs. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Center of the diamond uh, matters. But I mean, when you're keeping track of it, and this guy's been on a roll Ooh. better than anybody has in a long time. Even a guy like him, like you go to somewhere like, say, Yankee Stadium, where that short porch in right field is a definite home field advantage. But go ahead, stack your lineup with lefties against this cat yeah. and see how you fare. Yeah, no. You know, he doesn't care. He does, He wants the W when it's all said and done after your name. You don't care how many strikeouts you get. You want your team to win. That's why he was a little frustrated earlier in the year. He was pitching well and striking out a lot of those guys, but he wasn't getting the win. You know, two to one loss and things like that. He said, "Hey, I, I don't care. It's all all well and good. You get the strikeouts, but you got to get the win." Swinging a foul back, Rick. During that stretch of the double-digit strikeouts that you were just talking about, there was a five-game stretch, five straight games, where he struck out. Ten or more. Right. These were the scores in which he left those games, all of them deep in the game. Leading three to one, losing two to one, leasing, leading one to nothing, trailing six to one, and lose. Uh, he left in a tie game one one. Yeah. That's. I mean, he's blowing away the field, and every game's a white knuckler as Moss goes down on strike. Seven Ks for sale here tonight. 
take a look at those strikeouts tonight and you can see why the big bender. That slider has been effective. There's a good fastball. Another break of ball to the left hander. Fastball to Gomes. You know, and his changeup can also be a strikeout pitch, but it's all been fastball sliders. Well, and that's the thing. If you're a left handed hitter facing Sale, like Brantley, for example, as great a hitter as Michael is, he's not showing you that breaking pitch. That big curveball until he needs it. Right. And then you're, you're you're just frozen. Where did that come from? That's true. Popped shallow center field, eating a long run, but he's there. Two down. Tomorrow we wrap up this four-game series. Danny Salazar will go for the Tribe. Carlos Rodon, another lefty, goes for Chicago. Our coverage begins at 12.30 with Indians Live, followed with the first pitch at 1 o'clock right here on Sports Time Ohio. One more left-hander that they're going to have to face. Giovanni Urshela 0 for 2 tonight. Down and in. First wow. pitch strikes. Well, how about that? 23 Oof. at 27. He's had 14 0 2 1 2 counts. So he's pitching from in front. I think the art of pitching. Get ahead and expand the zone. 1 and 2 the count for Urshela. Much easier said than done, but you see a lot more pitchers doing it nowadays, especially your good ones. A little foul. Well, the tribe rookies in there tonight Lindor, Aguilar, Urshela. Lindor's one for three, Aguilar's one for three with an RBI. Urshela 0 for 2, his third at bat right here. Yeah, not, not an easy, uh, but you know what? When you come up and you're a young kid like this, you look forward to, to, to these meetings. There's a hit. Maybe. Get down. Maybe. Yes, it is. It gets by Cabrera. Gomes will score, and Urshela goes into second base with a two-out RBI double. And all three of the Indians' young guns have a hit off the Sox ace, Chris Sale, tonight. And the Indians get their second run of the ball game. They trail at eight to two. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you you go, you see these guys pitch on TV. You get called to the big leagues, and for the first time, you're getting a chance to face them. Cabrera dives. That ball gets under his glove, so it'll go as a double. Gomes comes around to score four doubles out of their seven hits. I'll tell you what, if I'm Chris Sale, you got a veteran in left field like Cabrera. That's you got to tip your cap. That's a heck of an effort in an eight one game. He well, could have I, easily I, pulled up now, on that and those said, hey, players, it's they, gonna drop in. But they know this guy's on the mound. He's giving it there his all. You got to give it your all. I think he might have knocked the wind out of himself. Yeah, too. he did. He did. Avila's hard shot to third. Saladino throws him out. Indians get on the board, but after seven, they trail by a half dozen.
authority of the Cleveland Indians and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cleveland Indians. Stay tuned for Indians Live presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. Eighth inning. Bottom third of the White Sox order coming up here. Alexei Ramirez, Tyler Flowers, and Carlos Sanchez. Right back to Adams. One pitch. One out. It's been on Andre Nadu who has uh, some notes on Alexei Ramirez. You know, we've talked about Alexei Ramirez throughout the series and just what the damage has been to do this game. Then you start looking up some of the stats. Since, 90, since 2009, he's bet the most games at shortstop in Major League Baseball, the most hits by a shortstop since 99, 09, is second in total bases. It just tells you, despite his figure, he has had one whale of a career so far with the White Sox as a shortstop. Yeah, and the best thing about it, Andre, he's out there every day. You know, Rick, Chicago's done a pretty good job of, of cultivating, I don't know if cultivating is the right word, but th they've got a good Cuban connection. Alexei Ramirez... Uh, they had. Uh, they got a Bray there. Yeah, Jose Bray has obviously been tremendous, but well, there was a time I'm thinking it was last they year. They had, had four, four in the five, lineup. Yeah, they had four starting in one game, and I think it tied a record. It went back to the '68 Indians, if I uh, remember correctly. Yeah, when they had Asq. Um, I'm trying to think who the pitcher was. Who was at first base? Um, Louis Tiant. Was it Tiante pitching? Okay. Davileo, was he? I believe you, yeah. But, uh, yeah, we had that, that stat. That was at the outfielder, Jose Cardinal. Ah, longtime first base coach with the Yankees, I remember, too. During Joe Torre's tenure there. And out comes Terry Francona. He's going to go to his bullpen. So Adams is finished. He went an inning and a third. So with two outs here in the eighth inning, we've got a pitching change. Cody Allen is coming on when we come back. for kids 12 and under with the purchase of an adult ticket. They are located in the new family deck here at Progressive Fields. So log on to Indians.com slash kids tickets today. Cody Allen 
Coming on to work here in the eighth with two down. He is the fourth Indians pitcher to work here tonight. And we're facing Carlos Sanchez, who is one for three with a home run. By the way, that last guy, I, I, now I remember why we didn't get it. It was a trick question because remember Zoya over Saez oh, was yeah. over and played for 71 games for the Indians of 69. And that's why we didn't get it, but he was in the side. We always lineup think of him day. with Minnesota. Yeah, right. Because he played with Ted Ulander and won the MVP in uh, Minnesota yeah. that year. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Carlos Sanchez, it was his first major league home run back in the fourth inning. And now he lines one just beyond the reach of Lindor. And he's got a single with two outs here. In the eighth inning, and talked uh, yesterday about Sanchez, who's starting to kind of get his confidence going offensively. And as Robin Ventura stated, you know, for a young player, it's just it's important to just survive when you're when you're a rookie and you're trying to figure things out because you can get mired in a slump and mentally it can just wear you out. But if you survive and you come through it, then you got a chance to stick around. Here's JB Shuck. Spent time here with the Indians. Also, the former Angel goes after the first pitch out of play. Chuck played at Ohio State, grew up in Galleon. Last year appeared in just 16 games with the Tribe. Actually came up with Houston and then went to the Angels. Tribe claimed him off waivers last year in September. And that's how the White Sox got him in November. Good breaking ball in for a strike. Swing and a miss. Manning over. Go to the bottom of the eighth. Eight to Chicago.
Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Boys and Girls Clubs of America to help young people to reach their full potential through programs that promote character, leadership, education, and more. For more information, visit foxsportsupports.com. Zach Duke, his 43rd appearance of the year. He'll be facing the two, three, and four hitters for the Indians. Francisco Lindor, Michael Brantley, and Ryan Rayburn. Well, Zach Duke has pitched four innings against the Indians this year. He has a win. Hasn't allowed an earned run. He's struck out seven. Duke has allowed three earned runs in his last 15 innings of work. Lindor, deep left field, back is Cabrera. He looks up, it's off the top of the fence. It hit the built-in out-of-town scoreboard and popped straight up. Lindor signaling at second base. He thought it was a home run. We'll see if we get any sort of review. It looked to me like it hit below the yellow line and popped straight up. When it hit the top lip of that scoreboard. Yeah, I agree. Let's get another look and see what you think. I, I think you're right. It, it, it was close. I don't think it hit uh, the railing or anything. It popped straight up in the air. There it is. It hit the top of that scoreboard. You're absolutely right. And it goes straight up and comes straight down. So it'll be a double. Double number five. Oh, so close. Lindor's already hit three home runs. That'll be his fifth double. Two for four on the night. His five hits in the series leads the team. Michael Brantley, one out of three tonight. He doubled with two outs in the first inning. Broken bat bouncer to first. Backhanded nicely by Abreu. He had trouble with his footing initially, but makes the play one away. As promised earlier, it's Miller time. Brought to you by Miller Lite. Larry Doby broke into the American League with the Indians July 5th, 1947. He was a seven-time All-Star. Twice the AL home run champ. His number 14 was retired here July of 1994, went into the Hall of Fame four years later, and today a statue unveiled in his honor that will be seen for generations to come here at Progressive Field. One hop smash to short. Ramirez will throw to first, two down, a run scores as Lindor comes home. Rayburn picks up his 22nd RBI of the year, and it's an 8-3 ball game. You know, maybe it was just a case that it's just natural. You know, some people want to say it's an American thing. Maybe it's just people in general. Because he wasn't first, because he was second, it, he sort of slipped through the cracks historically. And, I mean, 1998, he went yeah. into the Hall of Fame. Right. Really? It took that long to get I him know. into the Hall of Fame. Uh, his number was retired here in 1994. And, and even as... Uh, Paul Dolan said today, he goes, you know, maybe 
we as an organization, and that doesn't just fall on the Dolan family. Let's, let's go back. Don't just put it on them. And right. He said maybe we were late in getting this done, but we got it done. There's no question about it. It is done, and it's 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 rightfully so. There should be a statue of Larry Doby out there, the first uh, African-American in the American League coming up with Cleveland. And as his son told us today, he always felt Cleveland was the place for him, and he liked it the best. Never was booed. And always, always respected it. And I'm, I'm sure Cleveland always respected him as well. And I think, as I said to you at the outset today, I think because of who he was and the way he was, they loved him here in Cleveland. You know, not a showboat, not a look-at-me guy, just a Put your head down, work hard, play Blue collar, hard. let's go. Lead the league in home runs. Full count for Santana, two down here in the eighth. Strike three called. We'll go to the ninth. 8-3 Chicago. plays of the game. It was in that first inning and Carlos Carrasco ran into a buzzsaw. Four straight hits to open the inning and then with two outs a big two run broken bat single up the gut by Tyler Flowers and just like that it was five yeah. to nothing. And you're facing a guy like uh, Chris Sale that you're pretty much out of it before you even get a chance to go in there and hit and that's you unfortunate. You hate to say it but you know I'm well, sure everybody was thinking it. Well, come on. I mean, let's face it. You're facing one of the best pitchers. You know it's going to have to be a, a, a duel or a shootout. You're only going to get a couple, if anything. They've, they've got three on the board right now, but they were down five before they even had a chance to hit. Ryan Webb going to pitch the ninth for the Indians. Two, three, four hitters do up for Chicago after Cody Allen pitched a third of an inning to end the eighth. Tyler Saladino, his emergence is what made. Connor Gillespie expendable. Yeah, and he was traded out to the Angels. Yeah, it was one of those. They, they designated him for assignment. Right. And then eventually pulled off that trade. And Robin Ventura said uh, about Connor Gillespie, because remember, it seemed like he killed the Indians every time. Yeah, he played very together. well. Yeah, he sure did. 
One one pitch. But Ventura said, you know, he had some injuries in spring training. That had something to do with it. He just never got on a roll this year. Nothing really clicked for him. He couldn't find his swing. So he said, you know, it's a good opportunity for him to go uh, to the Angels, and they wished him well. By Urshela and into left field, and Saladino has his third hit of the night. Yeah, this kid, uh, I mean, our first time seeing him in the series, he handles third base pretty well. And it looks like he swings it okay. Stay tuned for Indians Live, presented by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care coming up next. Outside corner, a called strike. Malky Cabrera, six hits. You see it there on the in the series. And Make maybe a seven. seven. Over the head of Moss. Short hops the wall. Saladino screams into third. He'll stop there. Close play at second. And Cabrera just did beat the tag of Lindor. Yeah, that was a line drive. You knew it was going to be seven. A little slider that stayed down, and Cabrera can hit that low pitch. He hits it over the head of Moss. Brandon played it very well off the wall. Throws into second. Cut and made it close. Fourteen hits now for the Sox. The homer, two doubles, and the rest singles. Infield in. With Jose Abreu at the plate. And a strike home. Chased one on the dirt, and it's 0 and 2. Upstairs. One ball, two strikes. Runners at second and third, nobody out. And hey, Jose Abreu with a one two count. Smashes it in the hole. How do you like that? That'll score Saladino and Cabrera stops at third. 9-3 Chicago. That's Abreu's right. third RBI in the night. That's why this guy is just a, a, an RBI guy. He takes what is given and never gets pull happy. He, he, I mean, he stays on it. The infield's in. But look at him. He's going the other way just to get the job done. Not only that with nobody out, you got second and third on a ground ball. You know, you get the runner over to third base for another scoring opportunity. Just just a great job of hitting. Adam LaRoche takes a strike. Remember, we were talking earlier about that 2010 draft that produced Chris Sale. Matt Harvey went seventh overall that year to the Mets. Harvey pitching 
well for the Mets tonight. They lead the Dodgers 14 to 2. Not only is he pitching well, seven innings, giving up just two runs, but he has two hits. He's driven in two runs. Is that right? Well, they have 20 hits, don't they? Yeah. Lucas Duda has homered twice, both solo shots for the Mets. It's now 15 to 2. They just added another run. Royals and Astros, 1 1. They're in the ninth. Alex Rodriguez has hit three home runs tonight for the Yankees. They're tied with the Twins 5-5 in the ninth. Yeah, A-Rod got one in the ninth off, off Perkins to tie it. Webb strikes out LaRoche, one down. Bring up Avisel Garcia, who is 0 for 4 tonight, 2 out of 12 in the series. Madison Bumgarner helped his own cause earlier today with a home run against the Oakland A's. And the Giants beat Oakland 2 to 1. Well, the Bay Series. We'll be heading out there after Wednesday, Wednesday's ball game for a four-game series against the A's. Yeah. Bumgarner is now 11 and 5. Chris Bassett took the loss for Oakland. He's now 0 and 3. The former Akron Zip. Big story of the day. If you missed it earlier, Cole Hamels a no-hitter for the Philadelphia Phillies against the Cubs at Wrigley. 0-1. Missed inside. Blue Jays, as they are prone to do, outslugged Seattle today 8 to 6. That was at Safeco Field. Generally, not a place you see a lot of high scoring games. Chris Colabello broke the tie of the ninth with a two run single. He's having a heck of a year. Again, it's in tight 2 and 1. Ezekiel Carrera hit a two-run home run in that game for Toronto. Wow. At Safeco Field. Nah. Two one picks. What's wrong with this picture, right? <laughs> it was. Well, you put a Blue Jay uniform on and uh, you, you hit homers. <laughs> I think it's in the uniform. Up the middle and through. Garcia with his first hit of the night. Drives home a run. 10-3 Chicago. Abreu stops at second. And the White Sox just continue to hit. Four hits in the ninth after they had six hits in the first inning of this game. Yeah, I mean, everything they hit. And like I said, they have a two doubles and a home run. And the rest, 13 singles. That's how they've done it tonight. They've scored a boatload of runs. Now, they, these guys were last in the league in runs scored, and they've got 24 runs in the series in the first three games. And they got 36 hits.
Foul ball. Right field near the line, long run for Moss, and he makes the catch just inside the line. Abreu will tag and go to third, two down in the ninth. Tyler Flowers, he had the broken bat two-run single in the first that capped a five-run inning for Chicago. His only hit in the series. Inside he missed. The Yankees ended up breaking that game open eight to five in the ninth. So it's been eight unanswered for the uh, Yankees. Jim Mur was it Jim Murphy that hit a home yes, run? Yes, it was. Bouncing ball. Urshela on the move makes a good throw to end the inning. Two more home for Chicago. Once again, they're routing the Indians 10-3. And as we look back at our keys to the game brought to you by Wayside Furniture. It's not so much that the Indians didn't control Melky Cabrera. It's that they didn't control the White Sox, period, Perry, in that's the first right. inning. That's right. They, they blew it open and ran away with it. And they they generated, hey, they scored two runs off Chris Sale. That's not too shabby. They punched him in the mouth early, and they could never come back. And they, they can't stop him. Chris, Sale, runs. Chris Sale's ERA coming in was 286. So to score two's not bad. Yeah, uh, in but seven innings. That's right. But what are you going to do? Uphill climb. And now Zach putting him to try to close it out for Chicago. 
Zach Duke worked the eighth and a lot of run on a hit. Putnam worked an inning in game one of the series. Struck out a pair. He did walk one. Came in after Samarja threw eight innings and only gave up four hits. You know, the one thing, the starters for the White Sox have not walked a hitter in this series. They have been out there just throwing strikes, pounding the strike zone, getting outs. Foul out of play. Ground ball to short, and Alexei Ramirez. Throws him out, one away. Strike call to Brandon Moss. Moss over three. He has struck out twice. And quickly the count. No balls. Two strikes. And he did not yeah, he, fall it yeah, off. He did not get a piece of that, and it's a strikeout for Putnam. Two down in the ninth. Ninth strikeout for Chicago pitching. So Jesus Aguilar, one for three on the night. If you want a bright spot, as I pointed out back in the eighth inning, the Indians' young hitters, Lindor, he has two hits, two for four with a run scored, including a double. Aguilar is one for three. And Giovanni Urshela is one for three. Aguilar drove in a run. Urshela with an RBI double. One on one to count. Series wraps up tomorrow afternoon with a one o'clock start. Tribal turn to Danny Salazar. He go up against Carlos Rodon. The one one swung out of missed. The one two pitch, swing and a miss gets away. Flowers throw to first, and the game is over. Indians go one, two, three here in the bottom of the ninth, and Chicago clobbers Cleveland by a final score of 10 to 3, and they've won the first three games of this four game series, a chance to sweep tomorrow afternoon in the finale. Winning pitcher Chris Sale, he's 9 and 5. The loser, Carlos Carrasco, he's 10 and 8. With the win, Chicago is now 45 and 50. The Indians are now 45 and 51. Well, a tough way to go. Chicago coming in here and just beating up the Indians, scoring a boatload of runs, getting a lot of hits. At least 10 hits in every game. They had 16 tonight. So I'll tell you, the Indians got their work cut off for them. Another left-hander, the rookie, wrote on tomorrow. So, uh, boy, they got they got to work hard just to get salvage one win in this series yeah it's a it's a tough situation for the Indians because it's almost like you just feel 
you feel the hope that they had built up for potentially still being able to contend for playoff position really starting to slide away in a hurry right now. Well, and they're doing it, and it's at, happening at home where it's happened all year long. It's hard to explain, but again, they get three runs, so 48 times at half their games, uh, the three runs or less on the year. You saw Brandon Moss sitting on that bench in the dugout looking out. Soul-searching time right now for the Tribe. They lose this one 10 to 3. And they'll have to try to avoid the sweep now tomorrow afternoon with a 1 o'clock start. We'll be on the air with Indians Live at 1230. For Rick Manning and Andre Knott, I'm Matt Underwood. Thanks so much for watching. Great tribute to Larry Doby earlier tonight. Statue unveiled here at Progressive Field. Stay tuned for Indians Live coming up next.